For the past week, the global conversation has been revolving around the scandalous Google's AI called Gemini. But if you're not up to speed, struggling to navigate the complex landscape of AI technologies, and are curious about the buzz surrounding Google's new release, this video is your guide to unraveling the mysteries of Google Gemini. And good news, this is a video for complete beginners. So if you feel you lag behind all this AI news and stuff, it's time to stop stressing out, because I'll be explaining everything from the very basics. We'll go through fundamental concepts, explore the capabilities of Gemini, break down their compelling demo discussing the scandal around it, and try to decipher what this all means for our future. So let's demystify Google Gemini and find out whether it's real or fake. To start with, let's break down a couple of basic concepts. So you know that all these IT behemoths are developing their AI tools, right? And you definitely heard of and tried ChatGPT, which is basically a chat where you can type your question and get an answer. You might have also heard that a while back, Google developed a similar technology called Google Bard. Bard is a conversational AI tool developed by Google. You can test it out at any time at bard.google.com. Google claims that you can collaborate with Bard to brainstorm ideas, spark creativity, and accelerate productivity. However, a couple days back, Google announced a new technology called Gemini. Let's now see how it's different from Google Bard. Google Gemini is a multimodal large language model developed by Google. Whoa, 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 let's pause here to make sure we're on the same page and to fully grasp what Google's Gemini really is, we need to deconstruct each concept in this definition. A language model is an artificial intelligence system that uses machine learning to predict and generate language. It is trained on a large amount of text data, such as books, articles, and social media posts, to learn patterns in language and understand the relationships between words or phrases and context, so that later it could reproduce similar patterns. Once a language model is trained, it can be used for a variety of tasks, such as generating new content, summarizing text, answering your questions, or translating between languages. All right, moving on. So what's a large language model then? Now, a large language model specifically denotes the trend of training a language model with a significantly higher number of parameters. In recent years, it has been observed that increasing the amount of data and computational power used to train language models with more parameters consistently leads to improved performance. So large language models have substantially more parameters than their predecessors and are capable of generating more accurate and contextually relevant language outputs. It's crucial to understand that their performance hugely depends on the training dataset. And it's basically a reason why all these products like ChatGPT and Google Bard are free. Every time you use one of those tools, you're basically their beta user training the model even further. Back to Bard and Gemini. Bard is an older large language model introduced in 2022, while Gemini is a newer one introduced in December 2023. You might want to think about it as an upgrade, the next version that has a different name. The main difference between the two is that Gemini enhances the capabilities of BART by combining two large language models, the BART language model and the Gemini Pro language model. This combination allows BART to have more advanced reasoning, planning, and understanding abilities. So overall, Gemini is an upgrade to BART that enhances its capabilities and gives users access to more advanced features. The last part of this definition that we need to break down is multimodal. Multimodal AI combines multiple modes or types of data to increase the accuracy, understanding, and predictions of AI system. In multimodal AI, various types of data such as text, images, audio, video and traditional numerical data sets are processed together. For instance, it mixes language and visual understanding, so it can create a text describing what you draw or vice versa. Draw something based on your book, article, or blog post. So let's see what Gemini is capable of. All right, testing Gemini. Here we go. Tell me what you see. I see you placing a piece of paper on the table. I see a squiggly line. What about now? The contour lines are smooth and flowing, with no sharp angles or jagged edges. It looks like a bird to me. 
Hmm, what if I add this? The bird is swimming in the water. It has a long neck and beak. It is a duck. Yes. A duck is a type of waterfowl in the family Anatidae. Ducks are closely related to geese and swans. The duck appears to be blue. This is not a common color for ducks. However, there are some breeds of blue ducks. These are typically not as common as other duck breeds. It is more common for ducks to be brown, black or white. Are you sure? What the quack? I was just talking about a blue duck, and now you're holding one. It looks like blue ducks are more common than I thought. Would this float? I'm not sure what material it's made of, but it looks like it might be rubber or plastic. What if I tell you it's making a squeaking sound? Oh, if it's squeaking, it's definitely going to float. Hmm, nice. It is a rubber duck. It is made of a material that is less dense than water. Can you teach me how to say this in a different language? And give me a few options. Ooh, can you explain how to pronounce the Mandarin one? Is it Yatsu? Yatsu is pronounced with a first tone. In Mandarin, there are four tones, which are essential to distinguish the meaning of words. The first tone is a high, level tone. Oh, okay. The duck is in the middle of the ocean. There is no land nearby for the duck to rest or find food. It is unlikely to find ducks here naturally. Okay, based on what you see, come up with a game idea. Oh, and use emojis, please. How about this? We can play a game called Guess the Country. Sure, let's do it. Clue 1. This country is the home of the kangaroo, the koala, and the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, that's easy. Clue 2. This country loves football and has won the most men's World Cups in football history. Hmm. You are trying to get me to find the paper ball under the cup. I accept the challenge. The cup to the left. Nice. I know what you're doing. You're playing rock, paper, scissors. What do you see now? The fingers are spread out to look like the wings of a butterfly. What's this? Big ear and barking mouth. A dog. Sweet. The coin should be under the right hand. Hmm, I don't know. The coin is in the left hand using a sleight of hand technique to make it appear as if the coin has disappeared. Both objects are round and flat. There you go. Both are food. The orange is a healthier choice than the cookie. Citrus can be calming and so can the spin of the fidget toy. They are both examples of popular toys that have been enjoyed by children and adults alike for many years. Give me some ideas for what I could make with this. I see pink and green yarn. How about a dragon fruit? Or how about a green cake with a pink heart? Okay, how about these colors? And maybe show me some animals. Okay, now I see blue and pink yarn. How about a pig with blue ears? Or an octopus? Or a bunny with a pink nose? Ooh, I'll keep those in mind. Which way should the duck go? Going left leads to a duck, which is a friend. Going right leads to a bear, which is a foe. It is better to make friends than foes, so the duck should go left. <laughs> Smart choice. This is a picture of a crab. That's right. Is this the right order? No. The correct order is Sun, Earth, Saturn. Based on their design, which of these would go faster? The car on the right would be faster. It is more aerodynamic. Which looks more fun? The one on the right, because it has a loop. What do you think this person might be saying? How about a woohoo? Oh, I love that. I see you're drawing a guitar. You've added an amp. Now it's an electric guitar. We can make some seriously loud music now. Given that you added drums, how about some 80s hair metal? All right, I see you've added a palm tree to the drawing. Change it up with some beachy vibes. What movie are they acting out here? I think they are acting out the famous bullet time scene from The Matrix. Ooh, nice! 
What do you think might happen next? The cat is going to jump to the wall and stick the landing. It's going to be a perfect 10. Oh, and it's a miss. It looks like it was just a little too far away. But don't worry. The cat is a natural athlete and it will be back up there in no time. Okay, I've got one more for you. Describe the drawing I made. It is a simple line drawing of the constellation Gemini. You did a good job of capturing the beauty of Gemini. Nice. That's it. I think we're done. Has this video got you excited? Well, let's discuss it. After this video was released, a lot of reputable media called it a fake, causing Alphabet shares to sink. But let's dig a little deeper into what happened. Is this video real and has the future already come? Or is it a fake and Google is claiming that they have something they never had? To a casual viewer who never worked in IT, this video kind of looks like magic. Basically a real-time Jarvis. But to the IT crowd, it might look fresh, but uh, unlike a blissfully un aware person, we take it with a grain of salt. And let me explain why. First off, you need to know that the algorithm is not capable of solving each and every task in the world. So everything you see on this video has been carefully pre-selected for you to see the desired results. But it actually goes even further. The reason several reputable tech media called this video a fake is that it was highly edited. So the allegations are basically true. Here's what Google is saying. We created the demo by capturing footage in order to test Gemini's capabilities on a wide range of challenges. Then we prompted Gemini using still image frames from the footage and prompting via text. So basically, this video is not real. It was a series of carefully tuned prompts combined with carefully selected still images. And yeah, it was made to look badass. To Google's credit, they have been transparent about that and even published an entire blog post on their developer's portal explaining how the results showcased in the video were produced. For example, when they played rock, paper, scissors in the video, the trick was done by creating prompts and fitting the still images to the large language model. Then this experiment was visualized in the form of a nice video where it was faster, more impressive, but the fact is they were combining prompts and still images. Also, when it comes to rock, paper, scissors, they explicitly hint that that's a game and that makes it easier for the algorithm to find the right answer so it doesn't yet work the way it was represented in the video. With the ball and cup shuffling game, they actually explain in this blog post how they trained the algorithm to understand when the cups were swapped, adding, of course, in what always get this challenge right. Bottom line, Google Gemini is not yet as powerful as it is in this video. What it can do, though, is switch between modalities. You might draw a picture and ask it to compose a song about it. Or you might fit in a book and ask it to create an illustration for it. It's like Gemini is acting as a translator, but instead of translating between languages, which, by the way, it's also capable of, it's translating different modalities from image to text, from text to music, and from video to text. For Google, the goal of this video was definitely wowing the audience. And they totally did. Yet yeah, being called hands-on with Gemini, it demonstrates functionality that is nowhere near the current release. And that just makes you wonder, where is this fine line between faking something and exaggerating it for effect? Lying? or presenting your products in the most favorable light. It's this big problem about offers that I mentioned in this video. You need your offer to be enticing and captivating, but you also need to deliver on it. Google later claimed that this video was about inspiring their team and the world with the opportunities that AI might offer in the future. And that's okay, there is nothing wrong with creating a video that would present a vision for a specific product. But calling it hands-on is really misleading. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Having said that, let me confess, I love Google. With this video, I'm definitely not trying to expose them as something fake. They're definitely not. When it comes to presenting a technology that is not yet ready, they're not the only ones. To me, that sounds like a question of choosing the right words, achieving the balance between inspirational and misleading. Finding the right words is everything in our time. In the video, they say that it shows their favorite interactions and, well, it implies that the interactions we see on the screen are those interactions. 
especially when it comes to a new release. And perhaps we should assume that all the capabilities of technical products are being exaggerated. What bothers me is that not everyone is aware of such a thing. There are still hundreds of thousands of people who have no idea how this whole thing works. They assume that the magic is here, today, right now. But unfortunately, or should I say luckily, it's not. This exciting future is still somewhere down the road, and there are also a lot of concerns and questions about it. What if someone uses this tool for wrong purposes? How to divide the tasks between humans and AI? What should be regulated? What should be controlled? Moreover, the practical application of this technology also remains to be seen. Obviously, it can be used in a variety of tasks, and I'll provide you with a few examples in a couple of minutes. These tasks might range from coding to helping your kids with homework. So it's still up to us to find the application of this technology in real life. So let's now see a couple of not that badass, but still very very realistic videos of what Google Gemini is capable of and what tasks it can resolve. Thanks for watching and see you next week. As a parent, you may have to help your kid with their homework. I've certainly had to. Here's where Gemini can help. For this demo, we've created a simple interface and with some clever prompting under the hood, we can really leverage Gemini's math, reasoning, and multimodal capabilities to learn a subject like physics. With Gemini, you can upload a photo of handwritten answers on a worksheet. Not only can Gemini solve these problems, but this is the amazing part. It can read the answers and understand what was right and what was wrong, and explain the concepts that need more clarification. So Gemini identified some mistakes with problems one and three here. But let's take a look at three. Here Gemini identifies that the formula was correct but there was a mistake in calculating height. We can ask Gemini to explain in more details why the height is 50 meters instead of six. I can ask Gemini to explain further. Here Gemini explains the step-by-step -step details to solving the problem. Because of Gemini's ability to understand nuanced information and answer questions relating to complicated topics, it can give you a customized explanation of the subject you're trying to learn. And lastly, if you want to learn more, you can just ask. Gemini will provide personalized practice problems based on mistakes. Here I have a similar problem where I have to figure out the cat's speed if the height of the ramp is double. Oh yeah, I knew that. Let's see if our multimodal model Gemini can guess some movies. All right, we're going to start here. Given the play on words in these images, guess the name of the movie. The Breakfast Club. All right, what about this? Breakfast at Tiffany's. All right. What about this? Uncut gems. Cool, cool, cool. So these are working. Here's a couple more quick tests I ran through. Goldfinger. Nice. Bottle Rocket. Okay. The Wizard of Oz. Nice, nice. Moonrise Kingdom. Okay, this last one's a little more complicated. Forrest Gump. Okay, wow. I honestly didn't think it was going to get that. And that's an experiment in guessing movies with Gemini. Stay tuned for more. Thank you.